Did TSM finally make a good decision for their Challengers team? Well, it seems like it, so let's talk some TSM. That is right, everybody. We are back for another episode of Talking TSM. I apologize for my voice uh, over the weekend. I, I lost my voice a little bit, kind of uh, cheering for uh, the NFL games that were going on, uh, the football games, American football, however you look at it, uh, between the, the Jaguars winning and the Bengals winning. Uh, you guys already know I was still, you know, dealing with that cough. <sighs> this this exacerbated it. It didn't make it any better, but... Um, we're not here to talk about that. We are here to talk about TSM Academy slash Challengers new mid laner Doxa, which is I just I'm I'm actually happy about this move. Uh, I don't know if they really had much of a choice. I think they kind of got forced into this move to a certain degree because um, I had been hearing rumors about this for about two weeks. Um, you know, I'm talking with LCS Evie and a couple of my other sources. Um, you know, and Evie's and I are trying to figure out exactly, you know, who's trying out, what's going on. And, um, you know, it was really interesting because, you know, almost like as soon as Triple was let go, which if you want to know more about that situation, you can look it up on your own. I'm not going to really give him any more of a spotlight. He did a pretty, he did some pretty bad things. So we're not, we're not going to really give him any of a spotlight on this show other than this quick mention. Um, the other options, from what I was told, were there was um, another player from one of the amateur orgs from last year that just outright declined trying out for the team, which is interesting. At least that's a rumor that I was told. I don't know um, for sure because I only heard it from one person, but I did want to put that out there because that was a little concerning, if I'm being honest. But then... Um, I did hear from multiple different sources that the uh, people trying out were Poe Belter and Doxa. Um, I think they just had him in for scrims and, you know, I think TSM just kind of realized that they needed to go with somebody who was a little less experienced in order to, you know, satisfy the fan base like, you know, me and you. And be the reason I say that is because you know, I'm I am very happy that Hanser, Svenskeren, and Wild Turtle all have jobs, and that they are all, you know, there for for TSM should they need them. Okay, um, you know, I think specifically Svenskeren was a, a great pickup uh, for 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 you know being able to, I don't know, help the team overall. But I. You know, I really question the decision with things like with players like Wild Turtle and Hanser, who are nearing their 30s, and your Challengers team is there to, you know, build up a, a young talent. Um, we don't know. I don't know the exact age of Draku yet, but uh, I'm I am hopeful that uh, you know he is a little bit still on the <coughs> excuse me younger side as well. Um, regardless of if he is, Doxa is still somebody who is who has less experience, and I'm excited. Like, yes, he's been, you know, jumping around since 2019. Um, he has been to two different colleges now. Uh, well, technically three, but, you know, two two different colleges, three different times. Um, last year, he was on EG Prodigies, um, you know, for a pretty significant portion of the year, while also playing for St. Louis University. So, uh, and he was part of that Winthrop team that a lot of people, uh, you know, really, uh, I guess this is, yeah, this is not showing their current team, but uh, a Winthrop team uh, out of Canada that that is one of the better League of Legends universities uh, in, in, in the United States, or not United States, in North America at least. But um, as you can see, he's, he's dropped around a bit. He has really... Um, you know, not been able to find a home, and he was even with TSM for, you know, most of 2021. He was with EG Prodigies for most of 2022, so there's no doubt that he has talent. He is a strong player, 
Um, and I think he kind of makes this roster much more interesting, in my opinion. Now, let's quickly look at his top champions real quick. So, Zoe, Silas, Akali, Ori, Syndra, LeBlanc, Victor. Like, these are your pretty typical uh, normal champions. Zoe's not currently really in the meta. Silas, from what I'm hearing, is potentially a jungle option, but not necessarily a mid lane option. Good things are, though. You know, champions like Akali, Syndra, a little bit of LeBlanc. I don't think Victor, I haven't heard heard or seen much of that but you know Ari for sure and Rise these are champions that he's played before these are champions that I think you know should the meta stay this way that he will be able to I don't know I I, I think find some level of comfort even though he hasn't really been practicing obviously with the team because he's just joined so you know when it's a when it's a champion pool that you have you know a lot of different games on at we'll say tier four, three, and a little bit of two levels, right? Like, cause he's, he's in his three ish, four years that he's been bouncing around. He has been able to, you know, play a lot of different, you know, current pros. He's been able to play against, uh, you know, he's been able to play champions, uh, against people at a pretty high level. So, <coughs> excuse me. Overall, I, I think this is a good pickup. And and you can see that, you know, scrolling through his Twitter and everything, he, do, he doesn't really do much. But, you know, he's showing some stuff off and was just brought in uh, yesterday. And he's, you know, I, when he says, hey, I'm going to make, I will make a count. I don't doubt that. I don't doubt that whatsoever. Because I do think that this is a good opportunity for him when you look at all the other mid laners that are going to be in the you know, North American Challengers League, right? You've got some old guns and Pretty, Insanity, Ryoma. Um, you know, then you've got, you know, some of the more known options, you know, with uh, with Copy, um, Spirax, and I think Young even is a little bit more known. <coughs> even Saligo. Is down here hanging out at Wild Wildcard Gaming. Dark Wings was over uh, at uh, Dignitas, I believe, last year. So, you know, there's there there are a lot of interesting mid laners, and and you know, again, players specifically like Pretty Insanity and Ryoma, um, they have LCS experience. They have played at at the highest level, and so he's going to have an opportunity to prove himself. Now, he, there are younger interesting talents as well, uh APA I think and Eminez or I think the two biggest ones when looking at their uh you know, their potential rise. Now, I don't know much about Aspect or Blaze, Saranok or Shochi. Um and so it'll be interesting to see what, you know, those players are able to do, but uh I think, you know, I think Doxa adds a little bit of intrigue, you know, for us. Now, I don't think he's going to be pushing Maple out of his position, by the way. I think anybody who is, you know, anybody who's not, you know, putting Maple in the top six mid laners, I think is trolling. But not just with that, I think, you know, I, I think he's going to be very crucial to, to our team, to what we need uh, to be order, to, to be able to win. Honestly, I, I wrote my power rankings uh, for the mid lane. So yesterday, two days ago, something like that. And, uh, you know, I'm writing Maples and I'm like, kind of really, you know, thinking about, you know, okay, well, where would I rank him? Why, why is he so important? And I'm like, I mean, Yes, the jungle is going to be key to our success, but the player that is going to, I think, carry games, that is going to be our star, right? Not necessarily the player that, that our season hinges on, but the player that we expect it to make plays and everything, it's it's going to be Maple. And so, with that being the case, Doxa, I think, allows us to have a couple things. One, I think a more unknown, potentially younger, because we still don't know his age, but likely younger ish um you know north american mid laner because he is from canada which i think is fantastic uh and and 
you know, then secondly, I think if you can learn quickly enough, say Mabel just for some reason, which would be a terrible, but for some reason really just doesn't work out, then you know, two is is that I think he would be ready for a call up here within the within the first, you know, uh maybe summer, by the summer. The third thing is is I think even though TSM it feels like we're kind of pushed into this position because I don't think there were a lot of other, you know, mid laners available uh outside of Doxa, I do think that maybe this is a sign that they are because they could have just picked po belter i think i don't think you know the rules really apply uh as much to to challengers i don't know it feels like you know tsm's kind of skirting around those rules but you know if they really truly didn't care or maybe po belter just said hey i'm not that interested i i don't know what happened but i'm hoping that they they went well we could choose this guy who we know exactly how he's going to play and who he is or we're going to choose this young guy and i'm hoping that that's the case this young less experienced guy younger at least so i don't know you guys let me know in the comment section below what you are thinking and again i'm i'm more interested in this challengers team than i was before so i guess we'll have to see but yeah with that i'll catch you guys on the next one